three, two, one. All right, so this video is probably only for those who are, um, I guess, interested enough trying to figure out that um, interest I in your ordinary simple annuities. So I definitely recommend that you actually watch kind of my lesson six on this topic before you are interested in this. Okay, so I hope that you either ended up by watching the other video in this one. So I'm gonna put a link up above to the original video, which just goes over a couple of examples using the business calculator on how to solve for I. And I said in that video that um, it's great to see what if you didn't have a business calculator, what could you have done? And one of the things is that whenever you have a formula, so we have these two formulas for ordinary simple annuities, either future value or present value, you try to always isolate for your unknown. Unfortunately, sometimes it's really hard and almost next to impossible to do it. So then what? Right? If you wanted to isolate for the payment, if you wanted to isolate for future value, present value, if you even wanted to isolate for N, okay, the number of terms, you could have actually isolated and done that. Now, if you're trying to isolate for I, now that's a different story. And that's a hard problem to have. And most of the time, you're gonna use some kind of algorithm to find this I, which your business analyst calculator actually does for you. Um, or I will show you what you can think about. So you can kind of think about the problem in general, right, and what you are looking for. So before I dive into these two formulas, and then I'll go over the examples which I did in that uh, particular lesson, I will show you just a general question and then walk you through and then what can be done, all right? So here is just a simple question. So let's imagine that instead of you know something complicated, we were just dealing with this equation and someone came along and said, please solve for I, right? Now this doesn't have to be I, it can be X, Y, M, whatever. So if you look at this, we can certainly solve this equation. This is actually just a, a linear equation, one unknown, and we can solve for I. So I can do that. So let me do that now. So, and you would just simply, so let's get rid of our brackets. So I'm gonna have three plus three I is equal to 3.17. And now I can isolate for my I. So I'm gonna bring this over to the other side and I have 3.17 minus three. So that's gonna be 0 0.17, 3i. Now dividing both sides by three, I'll get my answer. So I can take out my calculator within here. So let me do that. And on our calculator, I can just say 0 0.17 divided by three, and there you have it. All right, so it's our answer 0. 0, 0.5 and 66666, whatever it may be, all right? So that's our answer, great. That's by using um, isolation. Now, if you play around with formulas like this and try to solve for I in that, and I encourage you to try to isolate for I, you're gonna notice that you're gonna have a problem. So then what do we do if we can't? right? So if we can't, there are now enough tools that we can use computation to find it. So I'm going to rewrite what I just had here. Ultimately, what are we trying to do when we are solving or isolating? We're trying to make the left-hand side equal the right-hand side. That's what we're trying to do. Now, we could have done that by guessing, Right? We can guess for I and we can keep guessing and get better estimates. And eventually, you know, if we're lucky enough, you know, eventually we might get into this. It might take us a while. So is there a better way of guessing? And the answer is yes, there is. Because we have so many tools now in our repertoire because our computers and stuff on the internet and all kinds of in spreadsheets, we can use okay, those tools to try to help us guess much better. And we're gonna be using guessing, okay, for these because we're gonna to try to solve for I. 
And I'm going to do that through examples. But before so, let me show you how we can guess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to okay, move this on the left-hand side so that I have 3, 1 plus i minus 3.17 equals to 0. All right? If I do this, then what I have is this right here is my left-hand side. Let me call this y, right? Because we sometimes like to say, you know, y equals to whatever. So let me say that, you know, this is y and on the right-hand side, it's zero. So if I can guess an i, which will make this equal to zero, basically I should get my answer right here. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. I'm gonna be trying to guess for i. Now, I'm going to be guessing in a little bit of a smarter way because I'm going to use tools to do it, right? Now, I kind of know what my answer is, but even if I didn't know, you know, I could see what is happening. So let me show you because I'm going to take this, what I just put in here in orange, and I'm going to set it to Y. Let me go to a tool, which is pretty neat, and it's called um, desmos.com. Right, so desmos.com is a great tool for graphing because I want to just show you that we can pick off the answer from the graph. So if you would go to desmos.com, so I'm going to just go to the math tools, which is on the top. I'm going to put graphing calculator there. And I just want to show you, okay, so what happens here. All right, so I'm going to bring this up a little bit for myself so I can type uh, easier, although you can just punch things in if you wanted to there at the bottom, as you can see. So I said that this Y, okay, was equal to, and we had one plus, now this graphing tool, instead of I, you know, I mean, it likes to use X and Y, so I can do that for myself. So instead of the I, okay, I'll just put X, it doesn't really matter. Um, and this is what that is. And actually, hold on, because it was a three in front. And this was minus 3.17. All right. And this is what I see there, okay, on the graph. And notice it's just a straight line. And I told you because it was linear. Now, it, could, it doesn't have to be a straight line. And you'll see that in the other examples that we'll do. So now you might say, oh, okay, well, how do I use this? Well, remember what we're trying to find is, we're trying to find, okay, when this three um, in brackets one plus x minus 3.17 is equal to um, that x when you substitute it is gonna give us zero because that's what we wanna be able to see. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just zoom in. So notice the beauty of this tool, and thank you to desmos.com for that. And notice I'm zooming in on the answer and I wanna see where that zero crossing is. So zero crossing is going to be at y is equal to zero, remember? So, you know, and I can keep zooming in and you will notice that, okay, I'm gonna just shift this over, okay, and as I keep zooming, and that's the beauty of the computational power, okay, and notice as I keep zooming in, Look at the answer and look what is happening. 0 0.0566, okay, notice it's between there. And again, if I just keep zooming, notice what is happening. So that is a wonderful way of guessing and using a tool to get to the answer because the answer ultimately was 0 0.0566666. And that's what you see here from the graph crossing. Right, so if you're looking at the graph crossing right there, that's exactly what you're seeing as I keep zooming in and zooming in here. All right, so that's what we would see there. So that's one way of being able to do it. Another way is, of course, you can also guess, and what you can do is you can use, right? So, and I'm going to show you. Okay, so what you can do is you can use just a regular spreadsheet, if it, whatever it may be, from you know Google Spreadsheets, um, it can be Excel, okay, so as you can see here on the screen, whatever it is. Now, how can you use a spreadsheet, right? So, well, I know the actual equation, and 
what I can do is I can just be guessing the number. I can be guessing that I. So, you know, here is my I, right? So I'm gonna put that and I can make it very, very small. All right, so I can make it this, that's gonna be my first guess. And then with these guesses, you can even make it smaller if you want it to. You can put in, so next to it, so I'm gonna write equals and notice that it was three times and it, this was, okay, so it was that, which is, sorry, this was one plus I, so this is my I, and it was supposed to be minus 3.17. So notice, if my guess for I was 0 0.0001, the answer there is negative, right? But we're looking for the answer when it is zero. We're looking kind of for the crossing in between. So I can make these guesses a little better. And what I like to do is, so what I like to do here is I like to say, all right, so it's the previous guess that I had plus all right, and I'm gonna go up by some small increments. All right, so this is what I'll have. And then here I'm just copying this. I'm gonna paste it back in here. So notice it's still negative, but notice it got a little bit better, a little bit bigger, a little closer to zero. So now with these two, what I will do is I'm just going to populate. So I'm gonna just copy this thing and just keep going. Okay, so notice I'm just making them bigger and bigger and I'm gonna do the same thing with this because I already inputted that in. So for all of these I's, I can put them in. Notice they're still negative, right? They're still negative. So now my guesses can become a little bit better. You, you're noticing that, well, it's, I mean, maybe I'm just, what is it like? Okay, I am getting a little bit closer to zero, okay? But it seems like it's taking a long time. So instead, what you can do is you can, you know, change your guess, your initial guess that you had. Okay, let's say, all right, well, maybe that wasn't, you know, that was too small there. And notice all I did was I just updated, all right, within here. So I just updated that 0 0.0001, okay, to something a little bit bigger. And now notice that all, they're still negative, okay, but they're getting a little bit better. Okay, to my answer. So again, I can update this, okay, and make it that. And now notice, oh, this is getting a little bit better now, okay? So here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing, all right, with that so that it changes everything, okay? And now I can just slowly pick away and make the changes so it is guessing, right? But now it's getting a little bit better and better. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to make these guesses and I can just change this and look how quickly you can do that. Because what I am doing is I'm trying to find the crossing between negative and zero. And look at this, it's going to be somewhere between here. Now we know the answer is 0 0.05666, but notice here that, oh, look at this. This is negative, but now this is positive. So that means that my zero crossing is somewhere there. And now you can make this so much more precise. You know that it's gonna be between 0 0.05 and 0 0.06. And between that range, you know, you can now start narrowing it down further and further and further. Now you might say, wow, this seems like it's a long time. You're right. Okay, it is not just simple easy because we can't just solve the formula directly always. In this case we could, but not in all cases. So you want to have tools and these are two tools I wanted to show you. I wanted to show you that you can either use, right, an actual spreadsheet, kind of guess the numbers and then go through so that it, you can be guessing a little bit better and let the computer do the work for you or you can use the tool okay, that I showed you okay, on the actual screen, which was okay, just a graphing tool in this case. And there are probably many other tools that you have and that may, I may not even be aware of. And I encourage someone to even put them in the comments. So now let's try and go back okay, without a business calculator okay, to solve 
these questions, which I did previously. So we know the answer here is around 12%, right? Now, it was compounded monthly for this example. You know, you're a financial advisor, you know, you want to have future value your client of half a million. It was for 15 years, okay? And you're making payments of $1,000 per month. So I just wrote down future value and payment and so on. So let me show you how we can use. Now, of course, I encourage you to use the business calculator. And that's the point that you see the power of that business calculator. Because what I'm showing you here with the guessing, that's what your business calculator is programmed to do. So definitely use it. But if you cannot isolate for something, then you know you can use other tools and this is one of them that I wanted to provide to you. So I know my formula for future value. So here it is. So let's, so I'm gonna copy this. So here is my formula. Now I am trying to solve for I, okay? So let's, I'm gonna delete here the, uh, the other. So let me actually, hold on a second. Let me just do this maybe instead so that we can all have it in one copy. All right, let me put a clean page here. So these are my givens. Let me substitute them in. So if I substitute it in, so future value. So this is, um, so this was 500,000 equals, my payment was 1,000. And I'm gonna simplify this for you so it won't be that bad. N was 15, times uh, 12, which is, um, I guess, uh, one, so, sorry, 15 times 10, okay, and then, so that's 180, that's what we had there, so minus one, okay, and notice, remember, we don't know I. Now, I can simplify this a bit, right? I can divide both sides by a 1,000 so that I make this a little bit better. So that's gonna give me, so this cancels off. So that is 500, all right, equals. And now on the right-hand side, all I will have is one plus I to the 180 minus one, and then it's all over I. So that's what I have in the bottom. Now, if I could solve for I, then all the power to me, right? But you will notice if you play with this, so you can't actually solve for I directly. So I'm gonna multiply both sides by I. The reason why is because I don't want to have the I there. So now I have 500I equals to one plus I to the 180. And good luck because that's a huge polynomial if you would have to actually multiply that 180 times, right? So just like with this example, except this original example right here, beautiful, we could just solve for that i. But now we have an exponent, and this exponent here, this 180 is causing us a lot of issues because I'm not going to take one plus i and then multiply it 180 times, right? And then try to solve for i. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move everything to the left-hand side so let me do that. So I have one plus I to the 180. Okay, so that is now, that's going to be negative there. Actually, I apologize. So let me do this. Okay, I will move everything to the right-hand side. So I'm gonna get, if I move it, everything to the right-hand side, I have one plus I to 180 minus 500I minus one. And notice we have the same thing. So I can say this is now my y, right? So I'm basically I'm kind of creating some function that I want to make and I'm curious, when is it zero? What do I have to plug in here for i so that it makes the whole thing equal to zero? That is now my problem, all right? So in order to punch it in, so I'm going to use desmos.com so the function and I'm going to just zoom in and you'll see okay what we're going to get now keep in mind because this time around 
we are compounding monthly. So whatever our answer, we're going to have to multiply by 12 because of the compounded monthly. And if we, so what we're looking for since the answer originally, when I did it was 12%. So we're, we should get I is equal to basically 0 0.01, which is 1% multiplied times 12 is going to get us two to 12. So this is what I'm going to input in because you know they like to use X so instead of this I. So this is what I'm going to do. Okay, so that's what I'm going to submit. Now the interest I'm gonna, and then I'm gonna just be zooming in on the function. All right, so let's do that. So here, okay, so let me remove this. Okay, let me zoom out. So let me just kind of create back. Okay, so this is what we have. All right, here is what we have. So y equals two. So this was, so in brackets, one plus x, okay, I, may, I called it x, okay, so to the exponent of 180, notice what's happening here, okay, uh, plus 500i, so 500x, I apologize, and it was minus one, I believe, okay, so I think this is what we had, all right, Let's take a look. Let me just go back, double check. So one plus, so that's correct. Let me, so I just made an error there. So it should have been X. So notice because they don't like to use the I. So that's what we have there. And it was actually minus. So let me go back in here. So this was also minus. So minus, okay. And this is what we have. All right. Now, clearly, as you can see, okay, so something is happening, okay, so there. So, and look at this. So, if I'm zooming in here, okay, look where that crossing has happened. So, now, there is something happening right at zero, okay, but that's not going to work for us, okay, but here, it is crossing right through all right so as you're looking through it okay and as i'm zooming in here okay look where it's crossing so if i you know if, I, if you zoom in there i mean this is amazing 0 0.01 and notice you know it's 0 0.01 you know zero 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 and so on so basically exactly what i said okay so that crossing is around that 0.01, just okay, as I zoomed in here. And now that you have that, well, then your answer here is 0.01. Now that is in decimal, so that would have been around 1%. Now times 12, you're going to get your 12% that your business calculator gave you. I wanted to really show this because this shows you what the business calculator is trying to do. That's why there's a delay because it's trying to compute. It's basically guessing. Now you can also plug this in into spreadsheets and then slowly be guessing along. Now, do you want to do this? No, I hope not. But for anyone keen enough and wanting to understand and you know is interested in math, okay, um, that's the tools that we use. And then the business guys, so when they're talking about annuities and all these things in terms of solving, okay, they use actually, you know, solving for equations. And this is clearly a very nonlinear equation. So there you have it. I have no idea. If you actually like this, let me know, put a comment, put a thumbs up. And also please let me know if, you, if this actually made sense to you. You clearly had to know a little bit of math, right? And solving for equations. For this to make sense okay so thanks for watching i tortured you a little bit and we'll see you in a future video okay bye everybody